To prove how nuanced this is, I actually took it to the streets of Instagram, and the answers were surprising. Today's video is all about the truth about maskne and how to get rid of it. What is maskne? What is it caused by? What other factors might contribute to the creation of maskne? Is it even real? Today is all about preventing maskne, so stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I'm Olena of olenavalet.com and I help women get clear skin without diets, pills, or expensive treatments. If that's something you're interested in, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel now. No, no, no. I recently got interviewed in an article featuring some prominent dermatologists on the subject of maskne, and I thought it was time to talk about maskne on this channel. What is maskne? You may have been Googling this subject for a little while now, and you have heard, likely already, that maskne is acne caused by a mask. But why is it caused by a mask? The explanation that you probably have already stumbled upon many times all over the internet is that it's caused by acne mechanica, and acne mechanica is simply irritation of the skin caused by friction. So wherever your skin is being rubbed repeatedly, your skin doesn't like that, right? So that is the area where your skin would get inflamed. And sometimes that involves the actual inflammation of your hair follicle, your pore, resulting in those pimples that we don't wanna see. We have to consider two cases here. We're gonna get nitty gritty and we're gonna look at nuances because my pet peeve is blanket statements. <laughs> Case number one, you were already experiencing inflammation way before we ever introduced masks into our lifestyles, meaning the mask had nothing to do with it. You may have been using some clogging ingredients in your skincare routine, some irritants in your skincare routine that were causing that inflammation before the mask, but then upon wearing the mask, now those ingredients are occluded under that fabric and that may be worsening the inflammation for you. Case number two, you had healthy, clear skin before ever wearing a mask. You had no inflammation anywhere in sight on your skin, okay? And then you notice new, perhaps, clogging or inflammation of any kind after you started wearing the mask. It is possible that the occlusion of the mask, perhaps the actual friction of the mask, perhaps the increased humidity caused by the mask is creating that extra inflammation for you. To prove how nuanced this is, I actually took it to the streets of Instagram and I asked you guys what you're actually experiencing as a result of wearing a mask. And the answers were surprising. I asked my audience on Instagram if they were using Olena approved products, meaning products that they found from all of my recommendations here on the internet, and still experiencing so-called maskne. 60% of them said no. 60% of people who were using Olena approved skincare were not experiencing maskne, many of whom are also healthcare workers and wear masks eight to 12 hours a day. But you think I took that answer as like, something? No, I went further, I asked more questions. If you really care to get to the truth, you have to ask lots of questions. So I asked those people who were experiencing maskne on Olena approved skincare, how many of them were actually using a fresh mask every day or reusing their mask. 60% of them were actually reusing their masks. More than half of the people who were so-called experiencing maskne were reusing their same mask every day. This made me really curious. I'm like, how can people who use well-formulated skincare <laughs> be breaking out? So I actually asked my audience to send me their skincare routines and photos of their skin before wearing a mask and then after having had introduced a mask into their lives. And the results were surprising! A few things really stood out. Namely, that the people that claim to have had maskne often only had like one or two actual pimples, okay? And they called it maskne. And I mean, I love my audience because you're actually, you know, taking care of your skin, you're following my advice, 
you're using well-formulated skincare. But what's important here is that we don't confound one or two pimples with a full-blown skin condition like maskne or full-blown chronic acne, hormonal acne, like whatever acne, right? So again, one or two pimples is a totally normal occurrence and two pimples can happen for any reason, any reason, right? And so we can't right away blame this piece of fabric that we're putting on our skin. Most people who were claiming to have maskne didn't really have anything severe on their skin, especially if you Google it, you'll see really, really severe cases of skin irritation right along the mask area. And nobody who wrote to me who having claimed to have had maskne had anything close to that, right? It was really, really mild irritation at best. But there were a couple of cases where I noticed it looked more like a yeast overgrowth and not anything caused by acne. Acne, right? So acne is something that none of us want, but many of us don't know what it even is. And so not all skin irritation is acne, and not all skin irritation caused by a mask is acne. Some of it is, like I said, dermatitis, rosacea flare-ups, malassezia folliculitis. It could be a myriad of things, but not necessarily acne. Now, for people who had more severe clogging, they weren't experiencing maskne either. They were experiencing clogging due to something like oils in their routine, because some people claim to have had Olena-approved skincare routines and then like rosehip oil as a moisturizer, you know? So by Olena-approved skincare, I mean like from A to Z, every single product without anything extra being in there. I like to say that a skincare routine is like a team. Each player has to play the game well, and if one of them really, really sucks, then the whole team loses the game. Every product in your skincare routine is important, and there is no room for mediocre players. You will have seen experts recommend two common solutions, and that is the inclusion of benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid in your skincare routine to treat acne mechanica. Let's think logically for a moment because that's my favorite way to think. If the acne is in fact caused by friction on your skin, like for example, a chin strap of a helmet that you would wear for hours at a time and it might rub and there might be heat and friction involved, right? For an extended amount of time. Or say it's summer and you're backpacking across Europe. You're wearing a heavy backpack and you might be sweaty and it's summer and that might cause some of that acne mechanica on your back. If your skin is irritated by friction, we don't want to add drying agents such as benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid to the area. What we want to do is reduce friction. Adding benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid to an area that is inflamed not by acne bacteria, but by friction, would be bad advice. What I learned, it differs case by case. And this applies to all skin conditions. There is no one size fits all approach. We have to actually learn the nuances. What is actually going on? How is the person using the mask? Which brings me to how do we get rid of maskne? If you are indeed experiencing more real acne, and I'm talking acne, not rosacea, not malassezia, nothing else, acne then the best way to treat real acne is to lower inflammation. And this can only be done through gentle care. I would focus on three main things to start with because this will definitely lower inflammation. And that is a gentle water-based cleanser, the three-step moisture method, which you can learn about on this channel. I will link it in the cards. And wearing sunscreen 365 days a year unless you live in a windowless basement. Again, I don't want to throw out use this active or use that active because everyone is experiencing a different kind of inflammation. It could be that you're drier as a result of the mask and you're experiencing more of like a dermatitis sort of reaction on your skin, more redness, right? So that's when you really want to protect your moisture barrier. You might be experiencing a tad more clogging. Then that is when you would want to maybe in introduce a chemical exfoliant, for example. But you have to consider what the problem really is so that you can give your skin what it really needs. The elephant in the room. <laughs> 
the mask. <laughs> How do you actually wear your mask? Do you reuse the same mask over and over again? What is your mask made of? Is it a heavy, maybe synthetic material? Or is it a breathable cotton? Is your mask too snug? Does it rub? Does it create that friction? Are you wearing like maybe heavy makeup and sunscreen and all these products and then your mask is mopping all of that up and then you're wearing that mask tomorrow? Or maybe you've pared down your products and you're keeping things a little simpler, your makeup is lighter, and you're wearing fresh masks every day. The context here is extremely important. All of these factors make a difference in you experiencing inflammation on your skin or preventing it. You're gonna need to care for your mask, wash it regularly. I like to pop mine in the laundry with the rest of my laundry, so the mask does not really get special treatment, but I do iron it after it's dry. You can get more information on how to care for your mask on the CDC website. So it's important to choose a mask that fits well, that fits your face so that it doesn't rub so much and it fits snugly but comfortably. So you're able to wear it for long periods of time whenever you need to and that's like always nowadays. Wear your mask proudly without needing to worry that it's going to cause any kind of skin irritation. <laughs> Now what about makeup? Because we just touched on makeup, let's get into makeup because everywhere that I've Googled mask me, everyone's saying, don't wear makeup, avoid heavy makeup. You guys know that my husband and I, we went to Mallorca where it was really hot out and we were wearing a mask pretty much always, but I had to be photo ready. So I was wearing sunscreen and makeup pretty much every day without creating any mask me. And the reason is quality matters. The makeup that I wear is really well formulated. It doesn't clog pores, it doesn't irritate the skin. And so even under the occlusion of a mask, there was no irritation and no excess clogging. And you must be wondering like, what do you wear, Olena? I share it on this channel. Click the link in the cards to watch the video so you can find out acne safe makeup. Now, another factor that we have to talk about is stress. If people think that they are experiencing excess inflammation as a result of wearing a mask, stress will make this much, much worse. So changing the story from masks cause acne to masks are simply a piece of basically clothing for my face and aren't that big of a deal totally changes your perception of the situation. Now you're like, ah, oh, yeah, this isn't a big deal. I change my clothing. I don't wear, you know, the same dirty clothing every day. So I'll just change my mask. <laughs> Masks have a lot of unnecessary drama around them, so I would get rid of that drama so that the stress around the subject can dissipate, and then you will probably find that you won't be experiencing this thing called masking. When skin is properly cared for and you have been lowering inflammation, experiencing one or two pimples is still very, very normal and many people confound one or two pimples with a full-blown skin condition like mask knee or just the simple acne. It's an organ and it's alive after all. So I would invite you guys to watch more of my videos and learn how to care for your skin, how to lower inflammation, how to choose well-formulated products so that you cultivate long-term skin health and don't have to worry about trending skin conditions. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was so fun to make because I got to poll my audience and that's always so cool to see what are people actually using? Like what are they actually doing, right? Getting the details. That's my jam. That was super fun. And I really hope that this video kind of shows you how nuanced skin health is and that, you know, sometimes things really look obvious like, oh, duh, I'm wearing this so it's causing this and Sometimes there are other factors that we have to consider, otherwise we're not getting the full picture. And sometimes by not getting the full picture, we can actually be creating more damage. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and click that notification bell so that you are notified when I upload the next video. This was Elena of elenabelay.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.